The Shannon School of Business Small Business Development Center is pleased to present Entrepreneurs in Action, a series of short videos designed to help clarify some of the issues that affect the business owner and may sometimes be a challenge. Developed by the business professors of Cape Breton University and featuring successful entrepreneurs, these videos provide viewers with the ability to ask the right questions of themselves and others to get the answers they need in order to succeed. My name is Dr. Jacqueline Scott, and I wrote the section on strategic planning for your business and doing up your business plan. And I'm really excited about this project because it gives me an opportunity to talk with small business people about what an important topic this is. Every year you need to go through that strategic plan and think about it because it's going to help you answer two really important questions that do make a difference to your business. It'll help you understand what if because you have to go through a lot of what-if scenarios. What if times get bad? What if times get good? Each one of those will have challenges. You have to have a competitive advantage, and that's it. So you have to know whether that's going to be excellent customer service, whether it's going to be the quality of your product, or your warranty, or any other kind of advantage that you can designate for yourself that your competition doesn't offer. Because without that, you're going to be constantly challenged to make a profit. Strategic planning, it's what an army general or an entrepreneur must do in order to survive. Put simply, it's how an organization defines its strategy or direction and arrives at a plan for finding and allocating the resources needed in order to move forward and win the battle. There are many business tools that can help us with this, and we will discuss several of them in some detail. But first of all, let's get a fix on what it is you hope to achieve. How much growth do you want to see in the next three years, in volume and in revenues? Where do you want to do business, in your local market or further afield, including national and international markets? How and where will you find the necessary staff? What skills and experience should they have? Are you prepared to train them? How much are you prepared to pay in salary and benefits? How will you finance any growth? Do you have cash on hand? A friendly bank manager? Do you qualify for any government financing programs? Are you willing to bet the firm? Mortgage your home? Sell off some equity? Knowing what you hope to achieve will guide you as you balance opportunities against risks. Summing up, a business strategy is an information gathering journey leading to a well-documented plan for your success. There are at least three major stages to developing a business strategy. Stage one, thoroughly understand your operating environment both inside and outside the company. Stage two, develop a number of possible alternatives for getting where you want to go and identify the criteria that will help you make your final choices. Stage three, prepare a detailed strategy implementation plan and monitor progress daily weekly, monthly, and annually. Let's look at them one at a time. Operating environment means what? To find out, you have to answer these three big questions. What business am I in? Am I selling something I made or a service? What can I do that will add value for my customers? What is my market? Who and where are my customers? Who and where are my suppliers? Who is my competition? How does my company excel? What does my company do best and how does it stand out from the competition? These questions must be answered very specifically in order to develop a business strategy that is well-researched and workable. It will be based on facts and will produce a profit even when things in the marketplace start to shift under your feet. What business am I in? Sounds easy enough. If you make ball bearings for heavy-duty construction equipment, then that's what you make. If you sell insurance to businesses, that's the service you provide. But suppose your business concept is a little more complicated, maybe. You develop unique software operating solutions for the long-distance trucking industry. Ever heard of the 20-second elevator message? 
It's how you describe your business to a stranger at a convention. Let's imagine you both get on an elevator in the lobby and she pressed floor number 24. You might say something like this. We develop software operating solutions for the long haul trucking industry that connect individual drivers in their cabs to the home office in order to improve efficiency, reduce paperwork and improve safety. 13 seconds. Now you have seven seconds left over to ask if you can make a detailed pitch for her business. Second big question, what is my market? Is it business to business or business to consumer or a combination of both? Does it matter where the business is located? What's the geographic reach? Are you selling just in Cape Breton, in Atlantic Canada, across Canada and into the USA, globally? Are your customers mostly urban or rural? How old are your customers? Are they men or women or both? Is your business going to be regulated? Businesses like food handling have to comply with a host of municipal, provincial and federal regulations. Do you have the proper technologies in terms of equipment and systems? Will you have to replace them frequently? And how about trends? Not haircuts or footwear, but economic trends like interest rates and political trends like local zoning laws and overseas revolutions. Remember, you are trying not only to picture what exists today, but also what might change during the period covered by your business strategy plan. Always remember, prediction is very difficult, especially if it's about the future. Question number three. What's your distinctive competitive advantage? In what way will your business excel? You may think you know, but there's only one way to find out for sure ask a potential customer. Better still, ask a whole bunch of potential customers. One thing's for sure, what you don't know can certainly hurt you. And while we're on the subject of knowledge, try to spend 15 minutes a day or a few hours a week keeping up with business reading or TV. If you stay informed, you'll be able to make some educated guesses about where business in general, and yours in particular, may be heading. So how does this play out in the real world? To find out, let's meet Chad Monroe, a biomedical engineer and owner of Halifax Biomedical, based in Mabu, Cape Breton. His company provides a high-resolution imaging technology, more accurate than traditional x-rays, to help surgeons track patient recovery after knee or hip replacements. Can you describe how you developed your first business strategy? The business strategy was, uh, you know, I, I was approached to uh, to run a, a project, it was a five month project, by a few surgeons um, and within three weeks I had more work than I could handle for three engineers and then I realized that I had enough business for a consulting company. What kind of things can change the direction you set for the company? Uh, the global economy, um, the recession, the impact on, uh, on large capital purchases because we, we sell uh, a large imaging system so again that can impact strategy because no one's buying for a year or two. Um, regulatory changes in Europe, regulatory changes in the US, uh, changing market perceptions amongst our uh, key opinion leaders, surgeon collaborators, changing market perceptions amongst our customers, uh, um, whether it be the hospitals or orthopedic companies. These are all factors that they, they come up and you analyze them and then you figure out uh, what we need to do to adjust or um, modify our, our path uh, so we can be sustainable and, and uh, remain successful. Did you see a distinct competitive advantage in your approach to sourcing or marketing product? When we looked at the problem, uh, the competing solutions would be doing nothing or doing another type of surgical procedure or doing another type of imaging procedure. So that's what we referenced ourselves against. Uh, and a lot of things that we do, we are the only company in the world that offers that, that service or product. Um, and so, it, you know, we reference against alternatives uh, rather than competitors. So, understanding the environment you will be operating outside of your own business begins with many questions and much research in order to get useful information. Now let's look at the internal operating environment. 
To build a successful company, you must thoroughly understand the strengths and weaknesses of your company. Each part of your business requires a sharp eye, with a view to reducing costs or improving quality in order to increase your profit margin. This requires a careful examination of your company's human and financial resources. Let's take a look at a few of the business tools mentioned at the beginning of this video. At this early stage, you're not expected to use them right away, but it's important to know that the tools exist. What are the three most respected words in the entire business world? If you said value chain analysis, you'd be wrong. It's Harvard Business School. That's where the value chain analysis was developed by Dr. Michael E. Porter. But the value chain analysis does deserve a lot of praise because it looks at all the functions that add value to your business and examines them to see where efficiencies can be made to improve operating margins. Translation, make more money. Three more of the most respected words in business. Next up, the Services Value Web developed by Professor Henry Chesbro, University of California at Berkeley. Remember, consumers will buy because they think a product or service has value for them. That's why many companies today work with a value model that encourages them to think about and work with customers in order to satisfy their needs. Why does the customer buy the product or service? What can be found out about how the customer uses the product or service? In short, if the customer can be communicated with easily and often, the product or service can be improved. Let's review. We've gathered all the relevant data on your external and internal operating environments. Now we need a tool that can put it all together and let you understand your overall competitive position and the business sector in which you operate. And here's a tool that will have immediate value for you at the advanced planning and startup stages of your new business. It's called the Five Forces. And no, it's not part of NATO, but it does fit in with our earlier theme of battling in the marketplace. Three of the elements of this tool arise from the external environment. Competitive rivalry, threat of substitute products, and the threat of new entrants to the market. The other two, bargaining power of suppliers and bargaining power of customers, are internal threats. Let's examine them. Without competition, your firm is likely to get lazy and you may not have the ability to handle change or enter new markets. Substitute products can offer the same function as your product but achieve this using different means. For example, as airline travel has become more of a hassle and more expensive, teleconferencing, video conferencing, and web conferencing have all moved in to substitute for meeting-related travel. How easy is it for new competitors to enter your market space? If it's relatively easy and low cost, it will pose a threat to your profitability and access to capital. Look no further than the internet to see how many manufacturers, distributors, and service providers are fishing for business around the world. How many suppliers will your business need? If you buy mostly from one, what's your fallback position if something happens to that supplier? And how much power does your supplier base have over what they can charge you? Will your customers be willing to pay more? Finally, and thanks again to the internet, today's customers often do have more choice. They can find products online or compare prices more easily. For example, most people who buy cars today can go online to check prices and variety and look at consumer ratings. Great ammunition when they go shopping. Chad Monroe believes that if you find your niche and dominate it, you can work from anywhere in the world and be a world leader. Chad, how do you monitor what's going on with your competition, with new technologies, with economic issues? We have different individuals that are involved in monitoring. So I, I, I'm involved in the, on the sales marketing side. So I'm, 
I'm directly in contact with our market or customers uh, and I'm, I'm traveling a lot so I, I, I'm in that user environment quite a bit so I'm getting data there. So there, there's multiple people involved in gathering the, uh, the data on the market, on our competitors and on emerging technologies and, uh, and we meet, you know, these things come up in our management meetings, we meet monthly. Uh, and if something comes up that's interesting, then we'll, we'll discuss it and uh, see how that affects our strategy. What role did research play? Our level of expertise has to exceed everyone else's. And so we have a very strong R&D department. We spend about 60% of all of our expenditures on R&D. We work with many different researchers from around the world, so we collaborate with uh, one of the best uh, biomechanical institutes uh, out of Berlin. This is all to um, engage highly competent partners so that we essentially become a, a bigger player uh, with having their involvement. So it plays a role but uh, I think it would be a mistake if you relied on market research. I think the best market research is to send out your, your people or to be out there uh, yourself and gather the data in a multidisciplinary uh, you know, team fashion and come back, process that information and make decisions about how to solve those problems. I think my advice would be to get out early uh, and if you can't afford to get out then you know, try to do it uh, through, uh, through video Skype or some you know, uh, remote tool and, and, and get you know, as much data as you personally can yourself. So You have to be the best in your field and you also have to exceed everyone else's technical abilities and knowledge. How do you monitor what's going on with new technologies? In my view on technology is, um, you know, these are all tools. And with any tool, you have to really understand what the tool does. You know, Twitter, Facebook, you know, all these other tools. Uh, Foursquare, um, you know, they're, they're nice, uh, interesting tools, but, you know, we still go back to some basics. Um, sometimes you can get really lost in the tool. Uh, and that will, uh, you know, limit your effectiveness. Okay, it's time to call in the SWAT team because we want to reinforce our five forces model of industry competition. SWAT is an acronym for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You might say that strengths are good news today. Opportunities are good news for the future. Weaknesses are bad news today while threats indicate possible bad news in the future. How do you turn all this into your personal business strategy? You take your SWOT matrix and turn it around to make it a TOES matrix. Now it gets easy. Take the strengths you've identified in SWOT and match them with opportunities in TOES. Bend over and SWAT your TOES. Not as easy as it used to be. In the same manner, match your weaknesses with threats and start working on possible ways to work around some of the risks. For example, if you are manufacturing a product, some of your strengths might be a highly skilled workforce, a good physical location, a recognizable brand name. Some opportunities might be increasing regional demand for product, upcoming contracts from a government, a favorable currency exchange with the USA. Now let's convert these conditions into some possible strategies. Redesign assembly line to increase production by 10%. Investigate a strategic alliance with another local contractor for upcoming provincial contracts. Actively seek out a distributor and establish a customer base in New England. Repeat this process until you and your fellow workers, friends and family members are exhausted. And voila, you've got a well thought out strategy for your new or improved business. Let's review the process that got us to this point. Stage one, thoroughly understand your operating environment both inside and outside the company. Stage two, develop a number of possible alternatives for getting where you want to go and identify the criteria that will help you make your final choice. Stage three, prepare a detailed strategy implementation plan and monitor progress daily, weekly, monthly, and annually. 
For stage three, you'll have to refer to a companion video in this series, which deals exclusively with monitoring and implementation. In the meantime, check out the resources available at no cost to you from the Business Development Bank's website. Thank you.